Question four is about waves, and it begins by asking us to explain what is meant by a progressive wave. Well, a progressive wave uh, is a transfer of energy. as a result of oscillations. Oscillations are vibrations. And part two asks us to state two differences between a progressive and a stationary wave. There are lots of good answers you could have here. Two particularly easy to remember ones would be that progressive waves transfer energy. and that standing waves have nodes and anti-nodes. Part B shows us a wave, it shows us the side view of a, a vibrating chord at one snapshot of time. It tells us that frequency is 5 hertz and the wavelength and amplitude as well. For part I, we're asked to sketch a graph of displacement of one point of that graph, the point X up here, between the time 0 and 0 0.40 seconds. And we need to add suitable scales to the axes. So let's begin looking at the y axis here. We know that the Amplitude 0 0.030, that is our maximum displacement. So we could make this point here 0 0.03, which would mean we could do that as 0 0.02 and 0 0.01, and likewise minus 0 0.01 minus 0 0.02 and minus 0 0.03. Okay, so that's our y-axis and our time is being measured between 0 and 0 0.4 so we could have 0 0.1 seconds, 0 0.2 seconds, 0 0.3 seconds and 0 0.4 seconds. So that's the scale sorted. Now let's take a look. Point x here at time 0, point x is at its amplitude, it's at the maximum displacement of 0 0.30. So our first point on the graph is up here. Now we know that the wave has a frequency of 5 hertz. We don't know the time period of the wave, so we need to use the equation t time period equals 1 divided by frequency which will give us 1 divided by 5, which is 0 0.2 seconds. So, after 0 0.2 seconds, x will be back up here again. And then, after 0 0.4 seconds, we'll have had another wave. So, if that is one time period, then after half a time period, x will have x will have moved down to the maximum negative displacement down here. And similarly at 0 0.3 seconds. And finally, as neatly as we can, we can sketch our wave. Part 2 asks us to consider W, X, Y and Z at time t equals 0. So at that moment in time, W here, the wave has passed through point W, so W will be moving down. X at that point actually is not moving at all. It's reached at the top and in a moment will begin to move back down again. So X is instantaneously at rest. Point Y will we'll be moving up and point Z 
will be moving down. Now W will be travelling faster than Y or Z because, because the maximum speed is reached as it passes through the midpoint. And the two that are 90 degrees out of phase with each other, well, from this point here to this point here is 360 degrees. So from between these two points is 180 degrees. Therefore, between these two points is 90 degrees. So that will be W and X. And part three of the question asks us to draw arrows to show the directions in which the points Y and Z are moving. Well, I've just done that, actually. Y is moving up because the wave is moving from left to right. And for this part of the wave to be over here, that would mean Y would be higher up. Likewise, Z is moving down because this part of the wave will arrive here next. And that will require Z to be lower. So those are the correct arrows. Part C introduces an equation here for the speed of a wave on a stretched chord, V equals K times the square root of capital T, where the t capital T here, note, is not time period, as it would normally be, but is tension. This is not an equation you'll have come across before. It's one that has been introduced in this particular exam paper, and you shouldn't be afraid of it, just because you've never seen it before. So we need to calculate the wavelength of the wave after the tension in the chord has been quadrupled, but the frequency is unchanged. Okay, so we have V, is proportional to the square root of t. So if we have 4 times t, the square root of 4 is 2, so that will give us twice the speed. So the speed of our wave will double if we increase the tension by 4 times. However, it's not asking us for the speed, it's asking us for the wavelength. We know that the speed v is related to the wavelength lambda by the equation v equals f lambda. If f is a constant, we can say that v is proportional to lambda. Therefore, if we have double the speed, we will have double the wavelength. And our original wavelength was 0 0.60 meters. So our new wavelength will be 0 0.60 meters times 2, which is 1.2 meters. Part D asks us to consider the speed of point W when the frequency is doubled to 10 hertz, the amplitude is kept the same. What's really important here is that we can't use V equals F lambda because that is the equation for the speed of a wave. Here we are just considering the speed of point W as it oscillates up and down. So point W has to move 0 0.03 meters up and 0 0.03 meters down. If we double the frequency, it means we're going to have twice the number of waves passing through this point per unit time, which means that W will have to cover this distance in half the time, therefore its speed will double. So W moves same distance, in half the time, So speed is doubled. So 0 0.94 multiplied by 2 equals 1.88 meters per second.